Hey there, this is Greg Van Kirk, uh, and I'd like to walk you through the problem tree analysis tool. Um, this tool is, as you'll see at the bottom, <clears throat> says, uh, how might we work to understand both the root causes and negative effects of problems? So I want to walk you through um, the about this problem tree analysis section, and then how to use this problem tree analysis, and finally talk about um, 12 application ideas that, that I've included here. One quick note before getting started. Um, I'm kicking myself that I did not um, have this tool uh, years ago. I only discovered this maybe four or five years ago. Uh, it's a very simple tool, but an incredibly powerful tool. I use this uh, all of the time in, in every course that I'm teaching, in every workshop, in every facilitation session um, that I can include it in. Um, it really is a, a universal, super, super simple and super, super helpful tool uh, to use individually or most certainly um, as groups. So I would I would highly recommend including this in your in your toolkit. So um, first about this problem tree analysis. Uh, so a brief description here that I'm going to read through for you. Uh, when you see a problem, one of the first things you should do is identify and analyze the root causes and negative effects of the problem. This helps you to decide where you might step in to address the problem. This problem tree <clears throat> uh, analysis tool will help you in your team do this in a simple and straightforward way. So there are three basic components to this tool. They are as follows. The problem. So this is your starting point. Um, this is the metaphorical trunk of the tree, right? So if we look down, we've got a tree, we've got a trunk, we've got roots, and we've got <clears throat> branches, okay? So this is the metaphorical trunk of the tree. Start here with the problem, however it is that you're currently defining it. So just come up with a problem. Don't overthink it. Right. Um, and then you're going to be able to work your work your way through that problem as you do this. Next are the causes. <clears throat> These are at the root level. Why does this problem exist? What's causing it? This is where you brainstorm and note down all of the causes you can think of. So use the five whys technique from the root cause analysis to do to do this. Right. So you just want to be asking based on what you have in the trunk. Why, 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 why? And include all the different ideas that you can that you can use there. Um, and then the last one is the effects or the symptoms. These are at the branch level. When the problem occurs or exists, what happens? What are the negative consequences? Capture everything you can think of here. Again, same thing, brainstorm. Get all the different negative effects for the problems up top. Uh, try to get to the consequences of consequences, right? You can go branches, smaller branches off of bigger branches. Uh, sometimes the second or third order consequences are more important to understand than the direct consequences. Okay, so how do we use this? Uh, so I'll just go here and, and walk you through it using the language from how to use this, but but show you the actual tool. Um, so start by noting, noting down the problem. You'll see there's a section there um, in the middle of the tool. Um, again, don't overthink it. Just write it down. Right? This really can help you get over paralysis or help you get over overthinking, overthinking things and just really get started noting things down and, and, and start to discuss things as a team. Um, next, number two, next go to the effects slash symptoms and note down as many as you can. So go up to the branch level. You could also go start at the causes level or you could just do both at the same time. But I have then third, then go to the causes and do the same. So you're gonna note all of those down, right? You'll see that I have uh, 12 boxes in each. You might have fewer or you might have more. Um, one other quick recommendation here is um, once you've come up with say the causes, Right. You may then want to take a cause that you found that you find that you, you can maybe act upon and put it in the trunk of the tree in the problem and go through the process again. That it really helps you to get to, to the root causes here. But at the end of the day, my strongest recommend, recommendation is that you're trying to find actionable problems. Right. Um, and right. Your problem where you start with, then you get to the cause that causes now your problem. Right. So you're just always redefining the problem. But you want to find something that is that is actionable and specific, right, and keep working through this. Apart from that final note here, as with all of the tools, uh, you can click on the actual tool here on the PDF version that you download from this email, um, and that will take you to the editable uh, Google Sheet. So you'll have a viewable copy, you just make a copy of that and then you make it editable and you can use it, uh, share it as a team or, or change it around a bit. Okay. Uh, final part here, I have what hats do you wear, right, recognizing that you might wear a lot of different hats or a different hat on a different day. Um, and so I wanted to give 12 application ideas here for some of the different hats. Uh, so certainly if, if you're a business, so thinking about the private sector, um, this also just works for any organization overall. Uh, you can get your team members into the habit of building problem trees for conversations, 
really, really helpful. You don't necessarily need the tool, right? But you can just say, okay, you know, once you come up with a problem, okay, let's talk about what some of the, the causes are and let's talk about what some of the effects are and work your way through it in the conversation. Life coaches and mentors, uh, use this with your mentee to help or, or the person you're coaching to help get to the root causes of problems and understand effects, right? So you're, you're, you're ideally or you're probably mentoring somebody or advising them or coaching them um, to work through something. This is a great way to do it. Uh, educators, uh, again, you can. this can be a methodology and approach that you teach your students to use during class. Think about social studies or history, right? Analyzing historical problems um, and while doing project work or community work. Um, consultants, I, this is an essential, a fantastic consulting tool, super simple, something to start with. Build problem trees with your clients so that you can come to mutual agreement and decide where to prioritize your efforts, right? So make sure that you're level setting and on the same page with, with the problems that you want to be addressing. Uh, facilitators, uh, again, wonderful facilitation tool. Have participants use this technique when working with each other. Have them practice first on a universal problem, right? So put this in the middle of a table. You think about if you're a conference or if you've got a workshop, having people go through and, and use this to get to the problems. A universal example, for example, might be uh, homelessness or poverty that you're going to start with, right? Before getting to what the specific issue is that, that people are dealing with, um, uh, who, who, you're, who you're there leading um, through the facilitation session. Students use this when working with people during service learning. I think about uh, work in a community in order to build empathy, better understand the situation and prioritize how you might participate, right? So great tool to work with communities to make sure that you're working with them and, and creating an, an empathetic environment. Up top, you look at parents, teach your children to use this methodology in their studies and as they explore the world, right? So this can be a great questioning technique or a great way to, to, to understand things. Um, really helpful tool to put in your children's toolbox. Entrepreneurs and innovators, this should be a, a, a very straightforward. Um, this is an essential methodology to understand the pain points, right? You're trying to identify pain points and negative effects of those pain points. Uh, this helps you decide where you can add value with your pain reliever solution, right? Helps you come up with pain relievers as opposed to vitamins. Um, essential for, um, for getting people to um, want to get access to and adopt your solution. Nonprofits, Use this together with community members to understand the context and where you can provide the most targeted support. Sit down with communities and work through this fantastic tool. Obviously, you can work with this internally for any challenges you have too. Uh, communities, right? Think about communities, think about government, right? Community groups, citizens groups. Uh, use this within your own community to understand so, so that you can um, all get on the same page and work together to solve problems in the most impactful way. Right. What are the problems we're prioritizing in our community and how do we work on them together? Uh, volunteers use this as a guide to understand how you can best help people you hope to support through your volunteering. Um, this should inform how you prioritize your efforts. So where should I be focusing as a volunteer? And just as an individual, um, use this for any challenge you're confronted with in work and life. This helps you decide what you can change and what you can't. Again, getting to actionable things. So that is our problem tree analysis. I uh, hope you find that helpful uh, and um, don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions or have any thoughts on applications or would like any support. Uh, so thank you and have a wonderful day.